Hi again. So we've been talking about normal form games and we're going to talk a little bit more about them. Still talking about situations where we are looking at pure strategy Nash equilibria. And what we want to talk about next um, is expanding beyond the two by two simple games that we've looked at. So the advantage of two by two games is obviously they're very simple to illustrate and, and fit on a slide. But more generally, in many examples and applications that we're interested in, there are going to be more actions available to players or more players looking uh, in, in involved in a game. So let's actually take a look at a, a very uh, famous game that has been analyzed in different contexts and, and illustrates a few points. So this is um, named uh, Kane's Beauty Contest Game. And it gets that name actually because Keynes in 1936 was talking about a situation where uh, there was a set of British newspapers where people would play a game where they had to name the picture that they thought would be the most preferred face out of uh, 100 photos that other people could also pick uh, faces. So it was a, a game of trying to match what other people were doing in the society. So in particular, the way we'll think about this game and the way it's often uh, looked at is that each player is going to guess an integer between 1 and 100. And in particular, they want to guess the, the integer that is closest to two-thirds of the average of all the guesses. Okay, So we look at the mean guess out of all the players, we take two-thirds of that, and whoever is closest to that wins the game, um, and the other players don't win. Um, so the, the, the idea of the, and you know, what Keynes was discussing in terms of, of talking about this game was the idea that there's a society out there and players would like to be uh, in advance of other players. So if you're investing, you'd like to sell uh, or buy a stock um, before other players are doing it, depending on whether it's going up or down. So you want to, say, sell just before everyone else sells or buy before everyone else buys. So you're trying to guess what other people are going to do and then do something in advance of that. So here the idea is the mean uh, is, is what you're trying to predict and then you're trying to, to get two-thirds of that. Okay, so let's, let's look at the, how we'd represent that in a normal form. So now we, we might have many players. Uh, in, it could be thousands, it could be hundreds, maybe ten. But in any case, let's take our set of players to be at least two, so more than two players. Um, and the action set here is AI is equal to um, the set of integers between 1 and 100. So you can name anything, 1, 2, 3, et cetera, up to 100. And um, how does the payoff function look like? What does it look like? Um, so if we think about the, the average of all the actions, so let's M of A be the average of, of all the actions, so the, the named numbers, then what does a uh, person get? Well, you end up winning um, you get a, a payoff of, of 1 in a case where you end up having the distance between the announcement and two-thirds of the mean being less than that of any other player. Um, you get 0 if there's somebody else, uh, some other player who ends up having a, a closer announcement to two-thirds of the mean than you do. And th there could be a case of ties in this game, so it's, it's conceivable that the players are going to tie. And um, if there's K players, for instance, who all are closest to two-thirds of the mean, then each person will just get one over K. So let's split things equally in a case where there's a tie. So now we've got a game. Um, we can't, you know, we, we, we could put it in a, a giant matrix, but it would have 100 different players, uh, or, you know, N different players, 100 actions for each player. So um, here we're not going to be able to put that on the slide, but this representation gives us uh, the normal form. And now we can begin to reason about what the play in this game is going to look like. Okay, so let's think about solving for an equilibrium in this game. Um, so first of all, uh, we, we can begin to sort of go through some reasoning. Um, and given that you want to guess two-thirds of the mean, um, the best reply of any player, so something that you can check and is fairly easy to see, is that the best reply of any given player is going to be below the mean of the other actions as long as, as people are, are, are announcing things above one. Right? So if everyone else is announcing something above one or the mean of the other announcements is above one, then I'd like to be below um, that. So if, if the mean was two, 
two thirds of two is, is four thirds, the best number to announce would be the numbers closest to four thirds, that would be one. So um, if everyone else is announcing uh, 50, um, if you look you know, at, at the average of 50, then what would I like to announce? I'd like to announce two thirds of that, um, uh, roughly 33. Um, you have to factor my own announcement into the average, but basically people want to be below what the average is. So when you begin to look at a game where everybody wants to announce an, a number below average, what's that going to do? It's going to lead to an announcement of everybody announcing one. So when you actually look at the Nash equilibrium of this game, there's a unique Nash equilibrium. There's only one equilibrium point in this game, and it's for everybody to announce one. Okay, so that's sort of a, a striking uh, conclusion given that we have all these strategies and, and uh, available, but in this case everything pushes down to everybody announcing one. We can actually take a look at a histogram. This is a histogram of, of how some students played in a, in a game, uh, in this game, in a class that uh, I taught uh, at, at, at Stanford. And here what do we see? Um, well, indeed, you see some, uh, most of the players announcing things uh, fairly low. Um, you do see, so there's some people, this is actually, these things are binned, uh, in, uh, so it doesn't uh, list every particular bid, but um, there were a bunch of people near 50. Um, there are some people who actually bid above 50. Um, and actually, you see people here, some people bidding close to two-thirds of 100. I'm not clear exactly what the, the logic is there, but if they think everybody else is going to bid 100, then you could bid two-thirds of that would be uh, 67. Um, if you think people are going to bid 50, well, the, if you think the average is going to be roughly 50, then you'd want to bid near 33, right? So you see a bunch of people bidding in that range. Well, now you can begin to think, well, maybe other people are going to bid, think that way, maybe they're going to bid 33, then if I go somewhere two-thirds of that, then I end up down here. But if people are bidding that, then there's some people who bid down here. But basically everything moves downward depending on what you believe other players are going to, going to do. Um, in this particular game, what happened? Um, what happened was that uh, you, you saw the mean of 18.2, the median about 14. Um, so in this case, the actual winner of the game was somebody who had bid 12. So the mean was 18.2, uh, two-thirds of that was, was 12, uh, and in this case, um, so you, you didn't see them actually playing the equilibrium. They played well below 50, but they played uh, somewhere above 1, which is the predicted equilibrium. So in this kind of world, um, part of what we're seeing is a situation where what you do has to depend on your prediction of other players. So if everybody thought everybody was going to bid 1, that's going to work. Um, this is not an equilibrium play because you're seeing a lot of people bidding things that are not best responses. So in this case, uh, if you knew what, whatever, what this histogram was going to look like, you could pick an optimal bid and win the game. So the question is making correct predictions and in a large society that becomes more complicated. Um, so actually what we can look at now is, is suppose we play this game again. So this is the histogram from the second time that the students played after they'd seen the results from the first time. And once they'd seen those results, then they realized that people were bidding much lower than they had initially uh, thought. So now we don't see anybody bidding above 22 was the highest bid. And we see many more of the bids uh, very low. And in fact, um, you, know, you begin to see the mean here is much lower than the 18. It's down to 4.76. Um, the winner in this case was, was 3. Um, and if you keep running this, then eventually things converge towards the Nash equilibrium. And now indeed we're seeing a lot of people play very close to the, what the Nash equilibrium play is of one. And uh, things are, keep, keep getting pushed there as we keep playing this game over and over again. So here's a sort of situation where you begin to see uh, convergence to Nash equilibrium as players are learning in a population of how things are going. But this gives us an idea that um, Nash Equilibrium can make predictions in games with many players, in games with many strategies, so it's not just something for two-by-two two games.